Heavenly Father, we want to say thank you so much for this moment. We want to appoint the throne of grace in the beauty of thy holiness and reverence of thy name, knowing that, Lord, you are God and we are mortals. And so speak to us at this moment and guide us into the path of righteousness as we look into thy word. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Greetings again and uh, it is uh, a nice thing again to gather together and be able to hear what uh, the Lord is speaking to us. I cherish His word because uh, it is truth and uh, at this moment I'll, I want us to look at uh, number 12 in the series that is uh, we are looking at uh, blotting out of sin blotting out of sin and so I pray that uh, you may have your Bible have your pen have a place to write have a listening ear and be at an environment where actually you can hear the Lord minister to you your family or if there's a neighbor that has come in and uh, you will want to hear together May the Lord be with you. And so we are looking at number 12 in the presentation that is in the series, The Latter End, and it is number 12, The Bloating Out of Sin. And so I like uh, to start uh, at a familiar point that is in the book of Acts. In the book of Acts, chapter 3, verses 19. This is the good place to start. It says then, Repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And so, we, the question to ask ourselves is, uh, when does sin, when was sin actually blotted out from the sanctuary? When was sin blotted out in the sanctuary? Uh, the children of Israel, when you go to Leviticus chapter uh, 16, you find that uh, we had what we call the daily services in Leviticus chapter 4. And then when you come to the Leviticus chapter 16, you have what we call the yearly services. The yearly services and so in the daily services what it involves is that uh, a sinner could come daily and repent bring a lamb when the sinner there's a sinner they will come in and uh, they'll confess their sins on the lamb that they have brought and then the priest will take the blood to the sanctuary and sprinkle on it and 
that will be the the daily services and uh, it also included uh, the morning and evening sacrifices where God had ordained two lambs let us look at these things uh, I would not like just to pass them by but uh, I like to look at them this is uh, should be in uh, Exodus the book of Exodus morning and the evening sacrifice one lamb in the morning and uh, another one in the evening it seems that the verse has uh, gone out of my mind the verse has gone out of my mind But uh, I'll try and give it to you when I get it. So in the in the morning in, in the daily sacrifices or in the daily serv services, uh, we had uh, what God had ordained. The book of Exodus chapter 29, just thinking about it, but uh, 29 from verse 38, the daily and the, and the evening sacrifices, I, I'll, I'll see, I'll put it on the screen. Thirty-eight. 46. Let us see what uh, the Lord speaks about the daily sacrifices. Here it says, Now this is that which thou shalt offer upon the altar, two lambs of the first year, day by day continually. The one lamb thou shalt offer in the morning, and the other thou shalt offer at even. And with one lamb a tenth deal of flour mingled with fourth part of an hin of beaten oil, and the fourth part an hin of wine for a drink offering. And the other lamb thou shalt offer at even, and shall do thereunto according to the meat offering of the morning, and according to the drink offering thereof, for a sweet savour, an offering made fire by fire unto the Lord. This shall be a continual bond offering throughout your generations at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before the Lord, where I will meet you to speak there unto thee. And there I will meet with the children of Israel, and the tabernacle shall be sanctified by my glory. And I will sanctify the tabernacle of the congregation and the altar. I will sanctify also both Aaron and his sons to minister to me in the priest's office. And I'll dwell among the children of Israel, and I'll be their God. And they shall know that I am the Lord, the, their God, that brought them forth out of the land of Egypt, that I may dwell among them. I am the Lord, their God. So that involved the morning and the evening daily services. Also in... Uh, Leviticus chapter 4 In Leviticus chapter 4 uh, verses uh, one to six.
you can read the whole of Leviticus chapter 4, but I'll just highlight uh, 1, 2, verse 7 possibly. Leviticus chapter 4. I hope you have your pen, you have a place to write and uh, you are taking notes. So this is what it says. And uh, the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a soul shall sin through ignorance against any of the commandments of the Lord, concerning things which ought not to be done, and shall do against any of them, if the priest that is anointed do sin according to the sin of the people, so we have the priest and we have the people, then let him bring for his sin which hath sinned a young bullock, without blemish unto the Lord for a sin offering, and he shall bring the bullock unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before the Lord, and shall lay his hand upon the bullock's head, and kill the bullock before the Lord. And the priest that is anointed shall take of the bullock's blood, and bring it to the tabernacle of the congregation. And the priest shall dip in his finger in the blood and sprinkle of the blood seven times before the Lord, before the veil of the sanctuary. Not this thing, not the word before the veil of the sanctuary. This is important. No, don't forget about it. In a moment we are going to see what it means. Before the veil of the sanctuary. And the priest shall put some of the blood upon the horns of the altar of sweet incense before the Lord, which is in the tabernacle of the congregation, and shall pour all the blood of the bullock at the bottom of the altar of the burnt offering, which is at the door of the tabernacle of congregation. So what is this whole process of uh, taking the blood of the lamb and bringing it to the veil of the sanctuary? The book of Hebrews 10. Verses 20. Hebrews 10 20. This is what we read. By a new and living way which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. So let us go back. And the priest shall dip his finger in the blood and sprinkle on the blood seven times before the Lord. Sprinkle of the blood seven times before the Lord, before the veil of the sanctuary. That is his flesh, the veil, his flesh. It was a symbolic way of uh, transferring sin. First, we know that Christ from John 1.29 is the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. And so... In the blood being sprinkled on the veil of the sanctuary, that was a symbolic way of transfer of sin to the flesh or to the body of Christ. That is why we are told that Christ is the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. He is the embodiment of that sanctuary. That, that, that is basically what was done in the yearly, uh, in, the, in the daily services. But uh, we have what we call the yearly services the yearly services the yearly services and you can trace them through leviticus 23 or leviticus chapter 16 and uh, in the yearly services Uh, they were the offerings that were made and uh, one of the significant points uh, I will not go into the sanctuary so deeply at this moment in a broader way uh, I have a series on the sanctuary it's already online and all that if you need notes you can go into that but I'll just like to remind you about the yearly services where actually we had the bullock for the offering of the priest priest's house and uh, uh, for their sin offering and a ram of burnt offering during the day of atonement and then we had the two gods one for the people and one uh, one as a, an escape god and then uh, they were offered during the day of atonement this was the yearly service and so this is where I want to pick it 
and uh, I'll read uh, a familiar text before us. Daniel 8.14. First of all, we see something happening in the book of Daniel chapter 8, when you read about it. You pick it from verse 13, it says, Then I heard one saint speaking, and another saint said unto the certain saint, Which spake, how long shall be the vision concerning the daily and the transgression of the desolation, to give both sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot? And he said unto me, Unto two thousand and three hundred days, then shall the sanctuary be made whole, made cleansed, justified, and done, uh, have it is rightful place so the greatest question to be solved is uh, the blotting out of sin and what um, what made the sanctuary unclean is uh, the sins of the people going into the sanctuary through the sacrificing of bullocks and uh, goats and lambs and pigeons and all that it is the sins of the people which made the sanctuary unclean so for the sanctuary to be cleansed Actually, uh, there must be an end of sin in the life of the people of God who profess uh, to follow Christ. And that's why in, Daniel, in Revelation chapter 11, you find that a read is given to the angel to measure the temple and them that worship therein to see if their profession matches uh, actually the standard of living. And so Peter speaking about this day he says again that uh, repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of the refreshing shall come from the presence of the lord and uh, the time of refreshing is the time of uh, outpouring the spirit of god to his people it is the time of pouring the spirit to the people this is the time that uh, the latter rain ha has to fall to the people of God and that uh, the Lord may be able to work in their lives to reproduce a character that is fit for heaven a character that can stand from that can stand can withstand the storm of the time uh, the invitation is for everyone so the word itself uh, i like to put something on the screen because we are in a class greek grammars and lexicons can show that the word translated when means in order that or that so it is this the the refreshing from the lord can be said that uh, it is prerequisite is that uh, we must repent in order for us to receive the latter rain because uh, god cannot outpour his spirit on the people who are still defiled you say how is that possible can you show a text that talks about that then uh, i'll give one the lord talks about um, <laughs> let us uh, see what uh, what the Lord says in the book of Matthew chapter 9 the book of Matthew chapter 9 verse 16 and uh, verse 17 we are not in a hurry brothers and sisters we are studying no man putteth a piece of new cloth unto an old garment for that which is put in to fill it up taketh from the garment and the rent is made worse neither do men put new scar new wine into old wine bottles else the bottles break 
and the wine ran it out and as bottles perish but they put new wine into new bottles and both are preserved so the refreshing from the lord cannot come upon a people who are still practicing impurity it cannot come to the people who are still uh, uh, practicing impurity they must repent of their sins be sanctified so that uh, the Lord may be able to work in their life do something new and uh, this is the, the, the state that God is calling us every one of us to be in we may confess our sins we may be able to receive the refreshing from the Lord for he cannot put new wine into old wine skins we must be made new for the Lord to be able to use us and so repent ye therefore so what is the order of things then? What is the order of things? First, repentance and conversion in preparation for the blotting out of sins in investigative judgment. This is from Great Controversy 1888 edition, page 445 to 486. And uh, when the sins are blotted out, when our sins are blotted out, the Lord is saying that uh, he will make a new covenant with us. Look at the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 8. Hebrews chapter 8. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, said the Lord. I'll put my laws into their mind and write them in their heart and I'll be to them as God and they shall be to me as a people and they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying know the Lord for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. Our sins are blotted out and uh, when our sins are blotted out I'd like also you to see with me something in the book of Hebrews 2. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 17. Just uh, go some few chapters down. So, 17 and 18. And their sins and iniquities I'll remember no more. At the time of the blotting out of sin, the sins are taken away. Now, where for remission of this, the sins is, there is no more offering for sin. It means that Christ will finish his work in the heavenly sanctuary because there is no more offering for sin. Why? Sins have been blotted out and the people that are to be taken to heaven, they are righteous, they are victorious, they are ready, they are justified, they are cleansed, they are made whole again. So, now, where remission of this, that is sin, there is no more offering for sin. So when Christ doesn't continue to offer himself as a sacrificial lamb, then what? Probation closes. So the Lord is waiting with a, a longing desire of the manifestation of himself in his church by a new and living way which has consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say his flesh. He has given himself for us that uh, we may be able to walk in newness of life. And so... Uh, he says that he will make a new covenant with us and uh, this is the covenant that uh, our sins will be blotted out. He will write his laws in our hearts. He will never remember them anymore. We shall be a people who are holy unto him. Looking again to Jeremiah 31. I'll just turn you to Jeremiah 31. 
about the blotting out of this sin. Jeremiah 31. Jeremiah 31, from verse 31, it says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was an a husband unto them. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts, and write it in their hearts, and will be their gods, will be their God, and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor, and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them, unto the greatest of them, said the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. Uh, Zechariah 8.8 8. Zechariah 8 verse 8 and I'll bring them and they shall dwell in the midst of Jerusalem and they shall be my people and I'll be their God in truth and in righteousness in truth and in righteousness this is the real blotting out of sin where actually people can have a people he say they are my own look at the book of uh, Malachi chapter 3 Malachi 3 It says three and four if you are having it this is what it says uh, and he shall sit as a refiner and purify of silver, and he shall purify the sons of Levi, and purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. Do you see that word? Again, very important to us. Offering in righteousness, which means in not sin. Then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant unto the Lord, as in the days of old, as as in the former years. I look for another verse. This is found in uh, the book of uh, Jeremiah. The book of Jeremiah. Chapter Oh, no. The book of Jeremiah. Can I find it? I can't find it for now, but uh, I'll give it to you. Uh, the book of. Uh, in the book of Jeremiah, we have a verse which says that the, you shall forgive their iniquity. And so, what I wanted you to see is that uh, the offering at that time shall be an offering in uh, of righteousness. No more will they continue to offer uh, to offer vain sacrifices unto the Lord. Jeremiah chapter fifty verses twenty. Jeremiah fifty twenty. This is the verse that uh, I'm looking for.
and uh, I just uh, blow it on the screen so that you may see it. This is part of the blotting out of sin. Jeremiah 50 verses 20. It says, In those days, and in that time, said the Lord, The iniquity of Israel shall be sought for, and there shall be none, and the sins of Judah, and they shall not be found, for I'll pardon them whom I reserve. That, that is, I'll pardon them, I'll pardon the remnant. And so, in the day of atonement, it was a total cleansing from sin so that uh, righteousness of Christ may be reproduced in the life of the people of God. So, what we need is a repentance and a conversion so that uh, our sins may be blotted out and the, the outpouring of the latter rain on those who have their sin blotted out may be able to happen. And so, Just to reiterate what I'm saying, uh, repent ye therefore and be converted that your sin may be blotted out. Repent and then conversion is preparation for the blotting out of sin in the investigative judgment, the outpouring of the latter rain on those who have their sins blotted out in the investigative judgment. So here we have the mark of the beast, the test before us, the zenith of the shaking, and then in that time, repentance and conversion is in preparation for the blotting out of sins in the investigative judgment, that is, and the outpouring of the latter rain and the refreshing from the Lord happening. So observe here how carefully the prophet E.G. White applies the scripture. The prophecies which were fulfilled in the outpouring of the former rain at the opening of the gospel are again to be fulfilled in the latter rain at its close. Here are the times of refreshing to which the apostle, the apostle Peter looked forward when he said, Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sin may be blotted out in the investigative judgment. That is what the prophet talks about. When the time of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord and shall send Jesus. Repent ye therefore and be converted. The words in the investigative judgment are prophet's own insertion in 1888 edition. <coughs> Sorry, and so we see that uh, for Christ to finish up his work in the heavenly sanctuary, an end of sin must be wrought uh, in the people who are actually appearing before him in the sanctuary. There is a call to the Laodicean church to come into true repentance so that the blotting of sins must happen, they, they may receive the latter rain and they may be able to sound the loud cry. So, what is the greatest test before us? The Lord has shown me clearly, 7 BC 976, that the image of the beast will be formed before the close of probation. For it is to be the great test of the people of God, by which their eternal destiny will be decided. Now, these are inter that, that is an interesting quote. Think about it. The image of the beast will be formed before close of probation. The image of the beast, it is the great test for the people of God. She didn't say the mark of the beast is the great test of the people of God. The image of the beast. And so, what is the image of the beast? I I'd like you to see the quote once again. The Lord has shown me clearly that the image of the beast will be formed before probation closes. For it is to be the great test for the people of God, by which their eternal destiny will be made. Now, there, there have been confusion about the image of the beast and uh, the mark of the beast, and people thinking that all these things happen at once. No. The image of the beast is one thing, and the mark of the beast is another thing. So, we may ask, image of the beast, what is it? What is the image of the beast? 
for if we can find what is the image of the beast then we can know where actually the door closes from the people who know the truth and it moves to the people who do not know the truth this is the gist of the matter the image of the beast the test of the people of of God the union between uh, the false protestantism and uh, that is uh, the church that should be the image of the beast so the people who have been in truth for a long time I, I like to you to see one thing about the image of the beast I didn't include this in my slides in the very act of enforcing a religious duty by secular power the churches will themselves form an image to the beast hence the enforcements of Sunday keeping in the United States will be an enforcement of the worship of the beast and his image and so the churches themselves will form an image to the beast hence the enforcing of Sunday keeping so the image of the beast is not the Sunday keeping itself but uh, Sunday keeping is the mark of the beast now she says that uh, the image of the beast is the test of the people of God last day events page 145 paragraph 1 I'd like you to consider these things that we are reading all who will not bow to the decree of the national councils and obey the national laws to exalt the Sabbath instituted by the man of sin to the disregard of God's holy day will feel not the will feel not the oppressive power of popery alone, but the Protestant world, the image of the beast. So the Protestant world is the image of the beast. Apostate Protestantism. You have to see that clearly. The mark of the beast is Sunday sacredness. The image of the beast is this false Protestantism uniting with the, the, the state power. And so when they do this, the image of the beast, it is the greatest test for the people of God. These are things that uh, actually we don't hear a lot. And so... The people of God must prepare. As the end approaches, we must study prophecy and understand what it is speaking to us. So, these are the things that are coming to the world and stealing unto us un unaware. They are stealthily stealing unto us unaware. And so we are in that time when we are seeing that uh, we, we are in that time when uh, we are seeing that um, uh, the uh, false protestantism uh, are uh, clasping the hands of the papacy and uh, are singing his tunes. I'd like you to see one thing also in LD 228. What is the image of the beast? 
Remember, we are talking about bloating out of the sin. What is the image to the beast and how is it to be formed? The image is made by the two-horned beast, that is the United States of, Af United States of America. False Protestantism. The image of, is made by the two-horned beast and is an image to the beast. It is also called an image to the beast. The two-horned beast of Revelation 13, 11 to 17 makes an image to the beast, portrayed in Revelation 13, 1 to 10. Then to learn the image is like, and how it is to be formed, we must study the characteristics of the beast itself, the purpose. That is the union between the church and state. When the power is brought back into her hand, then the people will face what are the, reform, the reformers faced in the past, persecution. And so, continue down, it says, in order for the United States to form an image to the or image of the beast, the religious power, that is false Protestantism, must so control the civil government that the authority of the state will also be employed by the church to accomplish her ends. This is the image of the beast. We focus so much on the mark of the beast, but we forget about the image of the beast in the blotting out of the sin in the sanctuary so that the people of God must be prepared. We forget about the image of the beast. But the image of the beast is the religious power, so controlling the state, so that it may do her biddings, it may accomplish her own ends. It is not the mark of the beast that we are looking for, say, but the image of the beast. The image of the beast represents that form of apostate Protestantism which will be developed when Protestant churches shall seek the aid of the civil power for the enforcement of their dogmas. Brothers and sisters, are you realizing what is the image of the beast? Now, hold on a minute, because I have to remind you one thing, and remind all of us. I'll just, I'm just coming back to this. We are looking at uh, the presentation, the blotting out of sin. And the blotting out of the sin of the people of God, they must be prepared and be ready during... Uh, the forming of the image of the beast, not the mark of the beast. The mark of the beast, then the people who are ready goes out to those who have never known about this thing and they bring in, them in. And so when the image of the beast is being formed, there must be a victory being uh, experienced in the people of God. There is a blotting out of sin in the people of God. And then they can be able to go out during the mark of the beast to accomplish the work. And so, let me put something here. The Lord has shown me clearly that the image of the beast will be formed before probation closes, for it is to be the great test for the people of God. So, listen carefully. The probation of the people of God closes. When the image of the beast is formed, then after some time the probation of god's people closes this is not the probation of the world this is the transition to another thing the lord has shown me clearly that the image of the beast will be formed before probation closes probation closes for what for the people of god the image of the beast is the test for the people of god and when they are tested in the image of the beast then the, their probation closes when their probation closes, now we have the people who are prepared going outside to preach unto those who didn't have the, 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 the information. They go out to reach unto the other people so that the whole, the probation of the whole world closes. I hope I, I'm still in the truth. Look here once again. In order for the United States to form an image of the beast, the religious power must so control the civil government that the authority of the state will also be employed by the church to accomplish her own ends. You see the evangelicals right now swaying the government of the USA to do her biddings. This is the image of the beast that we are talking about under 
the blotting out of the sins of God's people must be happening because this is their test and after this the probation she says actually the image of the beast is the test and then their probation closes go back in yellow the image to the beast represents that form of apostate protestantism which will be developed when the protestant churches shall seek the aid of the civil power for the enforcement of their dogmas and then they'll give breath to the image that brings in the mark of the beast the enforcement of sunday worship we are in interesting times the, the times that we are living in they are interesting times they are interesting times the students of prophecy should actually look into these things keenly so that uh, we are told that when the day comes it will not come upon us as the people of the darkness uh great controversy 88 88 edition page uh, 443 paragraph 2 remember we are talking about the blotting out of the sin and how it coincides with the image of the beast but what is the image to the beast and how is it to be formed the image is made by two horned beast The image is made by two horned beast and is an image to the first beast. It is also called an image of the beast. Then the, to learn what the image is like and how it is to be formed, we must study the characteristics of the beast itself, the purpose. When the Ali, see, so the image of the beast is like the revelation of the character of the purpose. When the early church became corrupted by departing from the simplicity of the gospel and accepting heathen rites and customs, she lost the spirit and power of God. And in order to control the consciences of the people, she sought the support of the secular power. This seeking of the support of the secular power is what is called the image to the beast. As I can understand it, maybe if you have another idea, we can discuss. The result was the papacy and the church that controlled the power of the state and blow it to further her own ends, especially for the punishment of heresy. In order for the United States to form an image to the beast, the religious power must so control civil government that the authority of state will also be employed by the church to accomplish her own ends. So this support of the secular power is what we are seeing. It is the image to the beast. It is the image to the beast. And... Uh, I'm talking about the bloating out of the sins of God's people from the sanctuary. It coincides with the image of the beast. But people are waiting for the people are waiting for the mark of the beast to be ready. No. The image of the beast is the test for the God's people and then probation closes. Soon I'll be putting 90 on the screen. And so, what are you doing as you see us discussing this thing? What is your status? What is my status? This is this this should be something that uh, uh, we should ask ourselves as we hear. As we study this, what do we learn? This national apostasy will bring in national ruin.
so let me uh 90 uh, i'll be coming back here 90 97.2 So what is the greatest thing? All that the people might know the time of, for their visitation. There are many who doesn't know their time of visitation. The time of the image of the beast and the blotting out of the sins from the sanctuary. There are many who have not yet had the testing truth for this time. There are many with whom the spirit of God is striving. The time of God's destructive judgment is the time for mercy of those who had no opportunity to learn what is true. Tenderly the Lord look upon them Tenderly will the Lord look upon them. His heart of mercy is touched. His hand is still stretched out to save while the door is closed to those who will not enter. Now, brothers and sisters, let us go back to the presentation. The Lord has shown me clearly that the image of the beast will be formed before probation closes. Probation for what? The people of God. He says, his hand is still stretched out to save while the door is closed. The door of probation for God's people that has closed after the image of the beast is formed. So the image of the beast is formed. The door of probation closes for the people of God. Yet his hand is still stretched to save those who did not have the truth. That is the chronology of the events. These are things that uh, I'm looking into. Are we aware? that uh, probation is closing on us stealthily. Now, I'd like to read from, uh, should I read from Story of Redemption or way? what? I read from Story of Redemption, page 381, paragraph 2. Just putting the pieces together for us. By the first beast is represented the Roman church, an ecclesiastical body with civil power, having authority to punish all dissenters. The image to the beast represents another religious body clothed with similar powers. Brothers and sisters, do you hear that? In Revelation chapter 13, we have the first beast. I think this is so good that uh, I have to pause again. have to pause and uh, put something here I want to read something as you are seeing on the screen this is so interesting to me by the first beast is represented the Roman church when you are reading Revelation chapter 13 you find that there are two beasts the first beast is represented is represented the Roman church, an ecclesiastical body clothed with civil power, having authority to punish all dissenters. The image to the beast represents another religious body clothed with similar power. Brothers and sisters, the image to the beast is not the papacy. That is what should be established. And why am I insist? Because she says that uh, I'll repeat this and repeat. The image of the beast will be formed before close of probation. Probation closes. For it is the great test for the people of God. The image of the beast is not the mark of the beast. Neither is it the purple power. But we are told that it is another power.
another religious board clothed with similar power. That is, apostate Protestantism is the image of the beast. When they are enforcing, when they are forcing the government to execute or to do their bidding. This is the image of the beast. The formation of this image is the work of the beast whose peaceful rise and mild profession render it to a striking and symbol of the United States. Here is to be found an image of the purpose. An image is a reflection of the original. So the image to the beast is a posted Protestantism and it's not the purpose itself. And this image to the beast is what will give life to the beast which was once wounded and then healed. So that this beast that was once wounded and it got healed, now it may enforce the sacredness of Sunday, which is the mark of the beast. When the churches of our land uniting upon such a point of faith as are held by, held by them in common shall influence the state to enforce their decrees and sustain their institution, then will the protestant America have formed an image of the Roman hierarchy. They will not have revived the papacy, they will have not formed the mark of the beast, but they will have formed an image, something that looks like the Roman hierarchy. So, apostate Protestantism, when they force the government to play her bidding, to do her biddings, then they are just standing as the purpose is stood during the dark ages. Then the true church will be assailed by persecution as were God's ancient people. Think about it. Because I'm thinking as I'm presenting, new information is coming to my head and uh, new ideas, ideologies and the things is blowing open unto me so that uh, I may see also some things that uh, are so interesting. Now, why am I insisting on this? It's because the blotting of sins of God's people have to happen at this period. And then they go and pass the information to Sunday keepers when NSL passes. And then those who accept are brought in and the flock of God may be made up. Think uh, about this, uh, about judgment. Just uh, let me look at uh, judgment for a moment. Great Controversy, page 480, paragraph 1. I'm having a good time, brothers and sisters. I'm not in a hurry. I'm studying the word of the Lord. I hope you have your pens, you have your books, so that you may be able to check in these things. In the typical service, only those who had come before God with confession and repentance, and whose sins through the blood of the sin offering were transferred to the sanctuary, had a part in the service of the Day of Atonement. Now, in the typical Day of Atonement, you realize that the nations that were surrounding Jerusalem, uh, Israel were not judged. It was only Israel who understood the matter that were judged by these things. But the other nations were not judged. And so, in the antitypical Day of Atonement, the same thing happens. The people who understand what the Day of Atonement is, they are judged first. So, in the Great Day of Final Atonement and Investigative Judgment, the only cases considered are those of the professed people of God. The judgment of the wicked is a distinct and separate work and takes place at a later period. Later period to what? To after the judgment of the people of God and their probation closes. Then the judgment of the wicked starts. It is a distinct work. Very distinct. Because in a short while what we have been learning for months, they must learn in weeks. Judgment must begin at the house of God, so clear from the prophet, 1 Peter 4.17. It starts with the house of God, then it passes to the world. And so the probation of the house of God cannot be the same clause of probation of the world. Now, if you want to have arguments about that, if you want to have debates, you have them. The Bible is clear, the SOP is clear. The people of God and their bloating of sins and their taste comes at the image of the beast. The test for the world 
is a distinct period and their judgment is a distinct period a time later at a later period later period to what when actually the church has been judged and their probation has closed those who profess to know god judgment must begin in the house of god and if it first begin at us what shall the end of them that obey not the gospel i hope uh, we are seeing the broader aspect of judgment and on the day of atonement the blotting out of sin this is a very critical issue so as we see the forces of false protestantism uh, trying to play the government to do their bidding the image to the beast is being formed and this is the test of the people of god their sins must be blotted out and then the judgment of the people who didn't know that happens next so read revelation chapter 13 7 bc 976.3 the image of the beast this is the test that the people of god must have before they are sealed now you know that uh, uh, the seal of God must happen, the latter rain and the loud cry. And so the image of the beast makes the people of God to be sealed, then they can do what? Receive the latter rain and do the loud cry. This is the test that the people of God must have before they are sealed. All who prove their loyalty to God by observing his law and refusing to accept a superior Sabbath will run under the ban of the Lord God Jehovah and will receive the seal of the living God. Those who yield the truth of heavenly origin and accept the Sunday Sabbath will receive the mark of the beast. So a line is being made, a distinction, a distinct is being made, a distinction is being made at this point. We have afflicted the soul. We are going through these things. We will be seeing them more and more. On the day of atonement, the blotting out of the sin, affliction of soul, remedy defects of the character, sigh and cry. Then we have a mighty shifting, mark of the beast, test is a zenith of the sh shaking. Then uh, the blotting of out of sins is happening during the test, which is the image of the beast. And then all these things are happening. May the Lord open our eyes. Not one of us will ever receive the seal of God while our characters have one spot or stain upon them. It is left with us to remedy the defects in our characters, to cleanse the soul temple of every defilement. Then the latter rain will fall upon us as the early rain fell upon the disciples on the day of Pentecost. Now, I want you to observe the screen so clearly. Uh, I'll put these things side by side. I'll, I'll, I'll switch forth so that we may understand this. I'll just go to LDE 179.2. This is crucial. Let us read what is on the screen. Not one of us will ever receive the seal of God while our characters have one spot. This is the blotting out of sin or stain upon them. It is left us to remedy the defects in our characters in the period of the image of the beast to cleanse the soul temple of every defilement. Then, the latter rain will fall upon us. Now you understand the latter rain does not fall on us before we receive the seal. We receive the seal, then the latter rain fall on us, then the loud cry goes. So there is the sealing, the latter rain, the loud cry. And the latter rain is coming at what point? When is the latter rain coming now? Check out clearly. LD. 179.2 the great issue so near at hand enforcement of sunday laws will weed out those who god whom god has not appointed and he and he will have a pure true sanctified ministry prepared for the latter rain so when the nsl comes people are ready they have received the seal of god and they receive the latter rain to go and bring in the other sheep of John chapter 10 verse 16. Is it John 10, 16 or 16, 10? John 10, 16, not 16, 10. John chapter 16 talks about uh, the Holy Spirit. And uh, John chapter 10 speaks about uh, the true shepherd, the door, and uh, 
the hireling and all that stuff of the sheep and the flock. And so John 10, 16 says that, And other sheep I have which are not part of this fold, also I must bring them in, that they may be one flock under one shepherd. And so the great issue so near, the enforcing of the Sunday laws, will weed out those whom God has not appointed. He will have a pure, true, sanctified ministry prepared for the latter rain. So when were these people sealed and prepared for the latter rain to usher in, to bring in the loud cry. They were sealed during the image of the beast. And now when the mark of the beast goes, they receive the latter rain to embolden them to do the work of the loud cry to bring in the other sheep. Brothers and sisters, do we understand what we are talking about? When were the people sealed? During the image of the beast, the blotting of sins have taken away, ha, have taken place. And they have been accepted by God. And now their glory shines upon the four corners of the world, which is the angel of Revelation chapter 18, the latter rain, the refreshing from the Lord, which brings in the sheep, which brings in the harvest, the multitude. The door is closed on those who will not enter while it is still open to those who never heard the truth. Where actually we were told that this is, uh, this is the bringing in of those who, who never understood what is the truth. And so, then the latter rain will fall upon us as the early rain fell upon the disciples. Now, let, let, let us uh, try to reason out. The disciples in Acts chapter 1, Christ has just been crucified and then he is in the tomb. He resurrects and then he is with the disciples. He goes to heaven and then comes back. And then uh, the disciples are gathered in the upper room, apparently reading prophecies and looking into these things why Christ has died and uh, all this stuff of the sanctuary and the prophecies that uh, were to be fulfilled. You find that Peter is after that reading from the book of Joel and uh, Stephen after that is uh, quoting the book of uh, the, the Pentateuch, that is Genesis to, uh, Genesis to Deuteronomy. He was studying prophecies. The deacons were there and all these people. And so, uh, the disciples are gathered, and what happens? The early rain doesn't fall to them. Why? The number is not made up. Because Judas had committed suicide. But when the number is made up, they are 12, it means that they are a company seal. You understand me? This is the typical, which is the early rain. For we are told, let us study the book of Acts again. So, in the typical, which we can say that it is early rain, which is a miniature of the latter rain, they are reading prophecies, they are becoming one, they are in one, in one place, in one accord, and then the number is made up. It was not made up, they were 11, and then they become 12, the number is made up. And when the number is made up, then the early rain falls on them. When the early rain falls on them, they have boldness to face persecution and go outside there and do the work of bringing many in. In the antitypical or in the greater part of the falling of the rain, because this was a miniature, let me not even call it the typical. In the miniature, this is what happened. In the great falling of uh, the latter rain, the number is made up. The number of a pure true ministry prepared for the latter rain. Then it falls, and those who are ready go and bring in the many that are in the world. And so the Lord is teaching us. And the test happens at the image of the beast. This is where the bloating of sin is, and then the door closes of probation. 
while the hand is still stretched to save, it is closed to those who will not end. There is no way you can argue about this to aligning of uh, the judgment, the close of probation for the church and for the world. Remember when Israel was told as a people that behold your house is left unto you desolate. It will reach a time that the corporate church and the corporate people who have heard the truth, they are told behold your house is left unto you desolate and those who are ready now goes outside to finish the work. And so we are seeing important things happen. So we are just waiting for the final events to happen in this world. And uh, Satan is working with ingeniousness to make sure that the people of God are asleep. I I'll read you something in uh, 1 SM. I think it is timely to read this. Is it in 1 SM? Oh, no. So, 1SM. That is 1SM uh, uh, 124.3. We are in the great day of atonement when our sins are, by confession and repentance, to go beforehand to judgment. God does not now accept a tame, spiritless testimony from his servant. Such a testimony will not be present truth. The message for this time must be made meet in due season to feed the church of God. But Satan has been seeking gradually to rob this message of its power that the people may not be prepared to stand in the day of the Lord. Now, you know, I have ever read this uh, quote for a long time and repeated it several. I want you to notice what I have noticed in the quote. The message for this time must be meet in due season to feed the church of God, but Satan has been seeking gradually to rob this message of its power, that the people may not be read, prepared to stand in the day of the Lord. Now the great day of the Lord has come, and who shall be able to stand? And then we are told that the 144 will be, stand, will be able to stand. What is this great day of the Lord? What is this day that we must stand? The day when actually the superior Sabbath and the right Sabbath are put in parallel. Which one will you choose? Will you stand when we are approaching the second coming of Jesus Christ? In 1844, our great high priest entered the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary to begin the work of investigative judgment. The cases of the righteous dead have been passing in review before God. When that work shall be completed, judgment is to be pronounced upon the living. There is another case, the judgment of the living. That will be our next discourse. Number 13 in the series, the latter rain will be the judgment of the living. It will bring out something clear. And so, are we ready for what is happening? Satan has been gradually robbing the message of his power. We are in the great day of atonement, when our sins are by confession and repentance to go beforehand to judgment. God does not, not now accept a tame spiritless testimony from his ministers. Such a testimony will not be present to the message for this time must be meet in due season to feed the church of God, but Satan has been seeking gradually to rob this message of its power. So the judgment of the dead started in 1844 and it has to pass to the living. We shall see that soon in the next presentation. Are we prepared for the closing of this earth history? While the nations are being drunk 
with the wine of Babylon. What is happening to the church of God? Are they being purified to finish the work? Are they preparing to sound the message of Revelation chapter 18? So, in the blotting out of the sin and in the image, the formation of the image of the beast, what happens at this period? Uh, I'd like you to see this. The great false revival of Revelation 13, 13 and 14 comes before the true manifestation of God's power in Revelation 18, 1, 5. The formation of false protestantism, the image of the beast, happens prior to Revelation chapter 18. It is the false revival which causes America to pass the National Sunday Law Decree. Then the end of Revelation 18 announced that the ultimate apostasy is reached by the union of the church and the state. Continued on, great apostasy, the mystery of iniquity which had already begun to work in Paul's day will continue at his work until it be taken out of the way at our Lord's coming. The climax of the working of iniquity will soon be reached when the land which the Lord provided as an asylum for his people that they might worship him according to the dictates of their conscience. The land over which for long years the shield of omnipotence has been spread, the land which God has favored by making it the depository of the pure religion of Christ. When that land shall, through its legislators, abjure the principles of Protestantism and give countenance to Romish apostasy in tempering God's law, it is then that the final work of man of sin will be revealed. Protestantism will throw their whole influence and strength on the side of, of the purpose. By a national act enforcing the false Sabbath, they will give life and vigor to the corrupt faith of Rome, reviving her tyranny and oppression of conscience, then it will be time for God to work in a mighty power for the vindication of his truth. That is Revelation chapter 18. Image of the beast, blotting out of the sins of God's people and their sealing, then national Sunday law, the latter rain, and then the loud cry of Revelation 18. We are living in interesting time. The prophet then says, I saw another angel come down from heaven having great power and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not all her plagues, for her sins have reached out heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. When do her sins reach unto heaven? When the law of God is finally made void by legislation. Then the extremity of God's people is his opportunity to show who is the governor of heaven and earth. As a satanic power is stirring up the elements from beneath, God will send light and power to his people that the message of truth may be proclaimed to all the world. So this is it. You see that? We have now the end of Revelation 18 with us. When does it come? People have afflicted their souls, remedied the defects of character, they sigh and cry aloud. The mark of the beast, the image of the beast, the zenith of the shaking, the filthy garments are taken away, clothed with Christ's robe, the seal of God, mark of man in linen, there is Ezekiel chapter 9, and then the latter rain can fall, and the loud cry can go. And then we shall be seeing number seven. Praise the Lord because his word never fails. And when he says that he will have a pure, sanctified ministry prepared for the latter end, that is what will happen. And so whether men hear or forbear, we are in the period. Whether men sleep or awake, the watchmen are sounding the alarm with certain notes. A certain trumpet must sound forth that our people must be prepared. I pray that uh, I be prepared. I pray that you be prepared. For time shall be no more. 
do you reflect the lovely image of Jesus Christ? And then I was pointed to those who will not receive the mark of the papal power. They must reflect the image of Christ fully. Is this, is it found in early writing 71? Let us see if it is there. This is the last thing we read. I writing 71, paragraph 1 and paragraph 2, we read in closing. Brothers and sisters, I am overwhelmed with this information. Being brought fresh from the throne room of heaven, that we may be able to learn. Our last quote, 71, paragraph 1 and 2. I also that many do not realize what they must be in order to live in the sight of the Lord without a high priest in the sanctuary through the time of trouble. Those who receive the seal of the living God and are protected in the time of trouble must reflect the image of Jesus full. I saw that many were neglecting the preparation so needful and were looking to the time of refreshing and the latter rain to feed them to stand in the day of the Lord and live in his sight. Oh, how many I saw in the time of trouble without a shelter. They had neglected the needful preparation, therefore they could not receive the refreshing that all must have to feed them to live in the sight of a holy God. So the image of the beast at that time we must be prepared so that we may receive the refreshing from the Lord when NSL passes. Those who refuse to be healed by the prophet, prophets and fail to purify their souls in obeying um, the whole truth and who are willing to believe that their condition is far better than it really is will come up to the time of the falling of the plagues and then see they needed to be healed and squared from, uh, from the building. Sorry. But there will be no time then to do it and no mediator to plead their cause before the Father. Before this time, the awful solemn declaration has gone forth. He that is just, let him be just, and he that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. I saw that none could share the refreshing unless they obtain the victory over every besetment, over pride, selfish love of the world, and over every wrong and action. We should therefore be drawing nearer and nearer to the Lord and be earnestly seeking that preparation necessary to enable us to stand in the battle in the day of the Lord. Let all remember that God is only holy and that none but holy beings can ever dwell in his presence. May the Lord be with us. May the Lord encourage us. We have no message of discouragement for God's people. We have no discouragement for God's people. We must continue to press forward. We must continue to draw nigh to God and then He will draw nigh to us. Let us do the needful preparation. And the Lord will be with us in everything that we decide. We shall see His presence being with us. Otherwise, God bless and may He continue agitating us, reviving us, and making us whole for His Holy One. Let us pray. Father, we thank you because you are holy and you are holy us and holy us. Give us the victory we need at such a time. That Heavenly Father, we want to say thank you so much for this moment. We want to appoint the throne of grace in the beauty of thy holiness. Amen. In reverence of thy name.